Welcome to In My Opinion 4, The City of Final Fantasy NT. The heroes and villains of Final Fantasy have been summoned to this world once again. Only this time around we introduce the two new gods, with Materia on the light side and Spiritus on the dark side. Materia tells our heroes that she needs them to fight against the villains for her to collect energy to sustain this world. The heroes having retained their memories from the last time they were here argue against this as they are tired of this constant battle. Materia still orders them to fight and some go out and do just that, at least for now, with others just trying to find a way out. Though while on their journey and crossing paths with the villains, they notice that maybe there might be something besides our two gods gods at play here. If you're looking for a grand Final Fantasy tale, then look elsewhere. Now if you're looking for some Final Fantasy fan service with some entertaining character interactions and fighting cutscenes, then you can call this home. The story does allow some characters to shine, but sadly some others just kind of disappear from the story or don't talk at all, which is a bummer. I do like the fact that the characters from the previous entries kept their memories, so we don't have to go through the whole where are we and what's going on with every single character again. It just affects the new faces. I feel you don't really need to play the last two games to totally get what's going on since besides the whole we know already thing, they don't bring up much stuff from past games. Also I wasn't a big fan of Materia, heck even saying her name is a pain in the butt, mainly due to her personality. I mean I get what they were going for but I feel like they dropped the ball. I won't get into too much detail cause spoilers but yeah that's just how I feel. The city as always is an arena battle game, letting you have full freedom of movement in your environment, though this time around it's a 3 vs 3 instead of a 1 vs 1. Your attack power is called break points and you have two different attack buttons. One is solely for gathering break points each time you knock around an enemy. What type of brave attack depends on what direction you're holding on the stick and if you're airborne, grounded or dashing when you decide to attack, so be mindful of that. Now the reason you're gathering all these break points is to attack with the second button which lets out your HP attack damaging your foe leading to their death or at least near death. I like the fact that the game will let you know with bright purple shiny colors if you have enough points to end your opponent and if your opponent is enough to end you. Though remember to pay attention to your break points since after you've dealt an HP blow they drop to zero and getting hit will trigger a broken status which will give your opponent a huge increase to their break points as well as leave you unable to deal HP damage for a tiny bit. This also can happen just by getting smacked around enough times with brave attacks. You do have a dash mechanic and while it's a bit slower than the past two games, it's for the best, as if it was any faster nobody would be able to really kill anyone since you would be just zipping around. It also has a limit which only refills once you hit the ground but it's pretty quick so it's not too annoying. You can't defend yourself with a little sidestep or even guarding but don't guard for too long as your shield can break. There are other elements that can help you in your victory. There's EX skills that can buff your team or debuff your opponents like helping your team's bravery and health points increase and binding your opponent to one spot or weakening their attacks. These do need time to cool down to use again so you can't spam them and you can dodge out of the way as well, so they never feel cheap. Then you got these crystals you can smash which fills your summon bar. Before every fight you pick your summon, with each having their own special skills like increasing match HP and defense or increasing bravery. All you need to do is press the touchpad when your summon bar is full which will initiate the summoning and the more people doing it, the faster it comes out. But this is a challenge as your enemy can attack you to stop you cold in your tracks. Though if you succeed, a big old summon will come out and attack the field. Now it's not overkill or anything like that as you can dodge these attacks but it can still help turn the match around if you take advantage of the opportunities it gives you. I personally like the simple but fun combat and the roster is a pretty nice size with 28 characters to choose from. Yeah, they took out some features from the last game like the launching mechanic and the RPG equipment, but I saw those as fat that needed to be cut off for a more balanced and better game. To be honest, the only thing I miss gameplay wise is the EX Burst, since it was something nice to look at. Some people also complained about the lock on system, but I've never had a problem with it, as it's just a simple click of a button and if you can't tell by the camera who you're locked onto, there's literally a line that shows you. The city offers a pretty good tutorial before jumping in and teaches you the basics, though it's not perfect as it's missing some things that could really use some type of explanation. Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know to ignore everything I'm saying right here. 
since I'm really talking about the game not giving any explanation to a character's personal EX skill and their little gimmicks as well, they finally fixed it with the patch of 1.06. Now you got a full move list that gives you the exact explanation of the EX skill and if they got any little gimmick, it will tell you that as well. So if I bring this up later on in review, just ignore it, they fixed it, thank god. And his personal skill trench, which increases how long he can dash and actually damages people during a mugging. You will not know any of this unless you went online and read it for yourself, which is pretty dang bad. This is something the tutorial really needed. At least the game explains the class system, like vanguards who are slow like tanks but hit hard, and assassins while not dealing as much damage are much faster. This lets you know what you're in for with each character and which fits your playstyle. However, they botched up on specialists and just basically said that they have something special which we didn't need. What we did need is a much clearer explanation. Okay, let's get to modes and I'll start with the offline stuff. First of all, you got the story modes which takes you through the tale of the game. What you might have noticed is these sections are locked. Well, you have to collect memorias to unlock them. And while that sounds annoying, it really isn't. All you need to do is raise your player level to get these which can be done by playing pretty much any mode in the game so you don't have to touch online to raise this if you don't want to. You also unlock more EX skills in the same manner. It only takes about 28 memorials to get the full story done. Now it's not all cutscenes, there are battles and even boss fights against the summons to break it up a bit. Now the regular battles are fine but oh boy those boss fights. First of all let me explain how these differ from the regular fights. What you gotta do is keep whacking them until they are stunned and then launch your HP attack. Seems simple enough yet some of these are so unbalanced that you want to pull your freaking hair out and curse whoever designed them. They deal out a huge amount of damage and their bravery recovery time is fast. So much so when they are near death they will spam HP attacks again, again and again. Mind you these attacks can take up a good size of the area. While I did find some pretty tolerable, some others were flat out bad with the most offensive fight being the final boss. But I won't show that cause spoilers. There is a little breathing room as only killing you counts for the match. So they can kill your AI partners all they want and it will not affect anything. What helps a tiny bit is you can receive a stat upgrade called story bonus level, which is tied to increasing your player level. What else you can do after the story? Well, you can fight harder versions of the boss fights, that is if you hate yourself. You can also do a gauntlet run for each of the teams you use during the story mode and a boss gauntlet as well, which leads us to our next mode. The gauntlet mode is basically an arcade mode. Pick your characters for either your standard match or core battle. Standard is the first team to incapacitate three people wins. Don't worry about being out of the match if you get knocked out as you are allowed to respond. Core battles are just you protecting your team's core from destruction while trying to break the other guy's core. As long as someone's in the circle area the core is safe and there's no death limit so everyone can die as much as they want. I personally don't care for core battles as it's just running back and forth or staying in one spot babysitting and it just wasn't fun to me. Though as you can see, it is a good spot to grind some levels. Huzzah for exploits. However, I still prefer the standard matches much more. Anywho, you need to survive 6 fights to clear the whole gauntlet and if you completed the story mode to a certain extent, you can unlock a chance for an extra battle against a random boss, though you don't have to take it. What's your rewards for all of this? Well, you increase your player level, character level, rank, you get some cash and depending how well you did, you can earn bonuses like more treasure coins and memorias. I've touched on player level so I'll get into character level and rank. Each character can be leveled up to level 10 and leveling unlocks 3 more HP attacks you can equip. This is great since it gives you more options to fit your playstyle. You also unlock character chat messages so you can communicate with other players online. What's also pretty dang cool is when you do these runs they level up the whole 3 man team and not just the one character you're using. Same goes for rank as increasing the character's rank increases the AI. So when picking your matches for Gauntlet, you can go for harder ranks that increase your overall score which then nabs you more rewards at the end. Remember losing one battle means you start all over again, but you still get some rewards, just a lot less. Like player rank, character rank can be increased by pretty much playing anything in the game. You do have a sparring mode where you can train to your heart's content. While here you can fully customize how you want to do this. Make the AI harder or just have them stand there. It can be a 3 vs 3, 2 vs 1 or even a 1 vs 1. You just gotta put the right settings. 
And while it does reset each time you go in the sparring menu, you can save up to 5 fires of how you like to train. Just a heads up for those who want to train on 1v1. All you need to do is take everyone out but you and one AI and make them stationary. Also, pick the core mode to train in so you won't have to worry about the 3 deaths and you're out thing. Sadly, this is the last of the single player game modes. And that leaves those who like single player kind of wanting. I mean, after the story mode, all you got left is the gauntlet stuff and training. They could have really used some sort of mission mode to beef up the single player. And the local versus wouldn't hurt either. It's time to have a look at online, which has you teaming up with two other people to take down another team. You can go in alone and team up with two randoms, but the game also allows you to make a party with friends before heading out to climb the ranks, which are separate from your offline ranks. What's odd is there's only the standard match type available for online rank, no core battle. I know I said I don't care for it, but it still would have been nice to have it for those who do. When it comes to picking a summon, it goes by majority vote. Also, all summons are available to pick even if you haven't personally unlocked them yet. There is a custom match that you can pick as well. Think of it as player matches. Here you can make or join lobbies. You have full control of the rules so you can have a 1 vs 1, core battles and more. But none of these affect your rank. So it's good if you just want to play but if you want to increase your rank, that ain't happening. After playing online I came away with a good feeling but that doesn't mean there wasn't some bad in it. Finding a match can be either really quick or take a few minutes. And then there's the matches themselves and how they play out. I ran into more good teams than bad, as in they actually look out for everyone and don't just leave you hanging when you have two other guys beating you into the ground. Yeah, you would think people would get the game, but sadly some don't and leave you to rot. And those matches will frustrate you. Now on the lag front, there were some matches that were pretty damn bad. I mean just chugging like crazy that I couldn't really connect my attacks right, and even locking on was a problem. Though thankfully I ran into more smooth or at least close to smooth matches during my gameplay time. And I've heard some that have ran into nothing but laggy matches. Though as I mentioned, my experience was a bit different. Now let's talk about the store. Here is where you'll be spending all that gear and treasure coins you've earned. The treasure coins are basically loot boxes that give you three random things. Like character chat messages, music, pictures for your profile card, and the most alluring thing of them all, the character and weapon skins. Now I like how they handle this system since if you're itching for a certain skin or even a tune, you can use your gill and go buy it instead of relying on luck. And the prices are not too insane, in fact the most costly things are the skins, but again, not an insane amount. Also all these are purely cosmetic so you won't be getting some power boost because you look a bit cooler. I wish other games that use this type of system did something more like this since relying on luck for that one costume you want can get annoying. One last thing I want to mention is a customization menu which you can enter pretty much any time out of combat. Here you can check on each character's records and your overall records. But most importantly, here's where you deck out your character. You can pick what EX skill you want and what alpha you want them to wear. There are 10 EX slots, 3 skin slots, and 3 chat slots so you don't have to keep coming back here over and over again if you want to try out something different. You can even make your own music playlist with the tunes you unlock. You know, for a 3 year old arcade game, the City of NT is still pleasing to the eyes. It's great seeing these characters get such a visual upgrade from the former less detailed look on the PSP, and the new faces like Noctis look great as well. Even with the spectacle of the EX burst from the last two games gone, the effects from the HP and regular attacks still pop and are nice to look at. The levels themselves don't come off as drab and boring. Heck, they actually change during combat giving visual rarity within the same level. Just like the characters, it's nice to see old things get a fresh coat of paint. You would think with all these effects going on, especially the ones during the summon attacks, the game will be a visual mess. But that doesn't happen. You still can see what's going on just fine and you even have extra help with the game's non sloppy HUD. That keeps track of the map and such. Frame rate in the camera was never a problem to me during these bouts. The voice work of our cast is good as far as I'm concerned, with the lone outcast being Materia. It's not that her voice itself is bad for the character, it's just her delivery is a bit off in most of her lines. There is dual audio as well, so if you're not a fan of the English cast, you can always change it back to Japanese. The game, being Final Fantasy, has some great tunes for combat, making you hyped as hell for the upcoming brawl. They even have old school bit tunes. I owe you one. I owe you one. I won't let anything stand in my way. I had an enjoyable time playing Dissidia and put in about 50 hours and played at least 100 matches online. 
The gameplay is solid, smooth and fun and they even cut some fat to make a better balanced product. It's nice to the eyes with great models and you never feel lost while playing. The story is entertaining for what it is which is basically fan service. It just sucks that some characters are left to the side and don't get to shine. The single player is lacking for those who like to spend a lot of their time there since it's just story, gauntlet runs and training. Also boss fights are awful. As I said before my online experience was pretty good with a few bumps. A good way to summarize this game is good but flawed. It's just missing some parts for a better package. Though in the end if you like arena battle games and Final Fantasy characters this title might be for you. So come join our heroes and villains for the battle over the world of Dissidia. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game and for gamer's sake keep gaming.